Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Dominic, I'm the host of The Android Factor. Today's episode here, we're going to, well, it's gonna be a two-part episode, so stick around for the whole thing, but we're going to start down the road of automatically distributing our Android builds to Firebase. We are, again, of course, using GitHub Actions. We're gonna use a very popular action out there in the marketplace. I'll talk you through how to set up everything that we need to do from zero to one to get this working. If that sounds good, smash the like button, subscribe if you are brand new, and let's go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, so I'm going to flip between both of these here. We have the Firebase app distribution app in the GitHub Actions Marketplace. And then we also just have the, uh, you know, corresponding GitHub repo to, you know, kind of look along to it. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and flip all the way down to the bottom to get into the guts of how this works, right? In some particular job, we're going to check out our code base. We'll set up Java. We will go ahead and build our uh, artifact, right? Make our ap application APK or AAB. And then we're going to go ahead and run the this down here, right? So we're going to use this Waziba Firebase distribution GitHub action. And we basically pass in a couple different pieces of information here uh, to actually enable the runner in GitHub action to upload a specific artifact to a specific Firebase project. And therefore we have now distributed our build. If we take a look at these first two items here, the app ID and the service credentials file content, we have to configure our environment a little bit here. The first one, the app ID is very straightforward. I'll show you in a second. And the second one here, the uh, service credentials file is basically setting up a service account using a JSON key that we've kind of set up inside of our Google Cloud project. So I know that might sound a little bit crazy, but it's actually really not. I'll walk you through all of it, have no fear. As I mentioned here, the app ID is very straightforward. Let me show you where that exists inside of your Firebase project. Once you have your project connected up in Firebase, uh, you can go ahead and open up the project settings here. And right here we have our project ID. Uh, really straightforward, very simple. That is basically this uh, key here that we need to put in. So that's not a big deal here. And instead, like I mentioned, the service account one is a little bit more intense. So we're going to set that up in today's episode. And then in the next episode, we are going to connect up all the dots and actually run everything. Cool. Let's just jump right into it here. I'm going to flip over to this documentation here where it says use this file here instead and learn how to generate one. And this documentation here on this wiki really kind of shows you how to do everything. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's not super complicated. So we're gonna go ahead and just walk through this. I've done this before, so I'm not gonna loop through the entire documentation. Uh, maybe I'll reference it if I forget something, but otherwise here we are just gonna go to the uh, Google Cloud, uh, just type in Google Cloud. We're gonna go to GCP, Google Cloud Platform. Once you're here, assuming you're signed in, we will go to the console. At this point here, if you are not selected, you know, if you do not have your project properly selected, you can go ahead and make sure that you have selected it. This is the same project that we have set up here in GitHub and Firebase. Your page might look a little bit different here. Yeah, maybe you can kind of see it from the side. We're gonna go into the IAM and admin here. We're gonna open up the service accounts option here, and we're going to go ahead and create a new service account. I think this was created when I created the Firebase project, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but anyway, we're gonna go ahead and create a new service account. I'm gonna give it a particular name. You could really name it whatever it is you want. I'm gonna go with the Firebase distributor. Description here is not necessary, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in anyway for best practices, right? Enables GitHub Actions to upload to Firebase app distribution. We're gonna go ahead and create and continue. And then in here, this is the most important part, right? We need to select the proper role. And the proper role here, uh, that we're looking for has to do with the Firebase. Yep, here it is. Firebase app distribution admin, full read write access to Firebase app distribution resources. So we're gonna go ahead and select that role. And at that point, we're gonna hit continue. If you wanted to have multiple roles for some reason on the service account, you can just go ahead and add more in, but this is all we need. We're gonna go ahead and click done. And now this one here, the Firebase distributor service account is what we've just created. We now are gonna go into here and click on manage keys. We are gonna simply create a new key and we're going to select of type JSON. Once you go ahead and create this, it has now downloaded the uh, key to your service account, the private key. I'm not gonna open it on camera for obvious reasons, uh, but it is basically a JSON file, right? And if we flip back to our documentation here, 
Let's see, let's see, let's see. Then we're going to go to our GitHub repository, our settings, secret actions, and we're gonna create a new secret, name it whatever we wanna name it, and then we're gonna paste the content of the file that we just downloaded into that secret. So bouncing over here to our GitHub actions, we can go over to the settings, we can scroll down on the left and select actions. We don't have any secrets set up at the moment. So we're going to add in a new repository secret, just going to copy and paste the name of this a credential file content, because, uh, you know, we're just following the documentation here, right. And then you're going to have to paste in information from the file uh, here. Once you do that, you're going to go ahead and click add secret. I'll show you that right now. Um, obviously, that is not the correct information underneath the content, uh, underneath that secret, but I'm just gonna go ahead and update this value off camera with what I downloaded from that file. All right, well, I'll at least show you this here, right? This is the, at least the structure of the file. I've gone ahead and obfuscated away some critical information. The one thing that we care for here that you know you're doing it right uh, is the private key value. You're gonna have this very odd looking information that says begin private key, a very long key, and then end private key. And it just kind of feels a little clunky that you would actually have that as part of the value of the key, but hey, it is what it is. So closing that here, I went ahead and updated this just a minute ago uh, with the content of the actual file. And now we are all set up. And because it is named this, the credential file content, right, when we have our GitHub action and we go ahead and call this out, the GitHub environment will actually have that information pulled from the repository secret. So we don't actually need to have that anywhere but inside of GitHub. So a super secure way to kind of, you know, maintain some secret credentials, some secret information, whatever the case is. Um, and that's basically about it. So perfect, we have everything that we need here. And let's just go ahead and jump right into it, right? So smash that like button as we get started here, subscribe if you are brand new. And of course, let me know how I'm doing in the comments. So this one is going to look rather similar to uh, this this other workflow. So that's why I just copied it real quick, creating another file here, manual deploy to Firebase. If we notice in the top left here, right, we kind of have job underscore manual underscore operation underscore. These are just little little ways that I like to kind of namespace the different files for their different actions. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and paste this info in. It's obviously not going to be called test debug, we're going to say uh, deploy to Firebase here. Instead of workflow call, we're going to change this to workflow dispatch allowing us to, um, you know, run this from the GitHub Actions UI inside of GitHub itself. We're going to go ahead and add in an input here. We're going to call this one release notes. Nope, that, that is not right. Sorry about that. We don't need to give it a name. The name of it is actually just, you know, the, the key there that you see uh, before the colon. Then we're just going to go ahead and add in a few attributes here, type string, let's call it required true. Of course, I need to spell required correctly. And here we're actually even just going to give it a default value as well, just to kind of show off being able to put in, you know, default values, we're going to go with uh, manual debug build, we have our jobs, we're going to have this job called build, we need the name to be a little bit different, building and distributing app that looks good to me runs on Ubuntu latest and then the steps here, right, pretty basic, we're going to of course, check out, we're going to of course, set up Java, we're going to set up Gradle, we're going to make Gradle executable. And the Gradle command that we are going to execute is not test debug unit test. Instead, here we are going to call the assemble debug, which is going to assemble our debug variant. This is going to yield the classic APK, uh, or you know, the, the debug APK that we you know, know, and run basically all the time when we run from Android Studio. So now we need the actual distribution side of things to come into play, right? Because we've told the action, okay, set up everything, uh, and create the build, and now we need to actually distribute the build. And the way that we can do that here is by simply just copying and pasting this exact uh, step here into our flow. So we simply paste that in upload artifact to Google Play, sorry, not Google Play Firebase app distribution, we're gonna have to go ahead and add in the Firebase app ID, but that's not difficult. We already have this configured, right, the credentials file content saw that before, let's just call it Firebase app ID. So let's take this, let's go over here, we have the credentials file content already from the previous episode, if you missed it, go ahead and check it out. And then the Firebase app ID, this is pretty easy to know here, uh, we're just going to get the project ID from Firebase, we're going to go back to GitHub, and we're going to paste that in. 
going to remove that line, why not? And we go ahead and add our secret in. Now we have the Firebase app ID, the credentials file content, all of them, or both of those are in secrets. We're using both of them inside of this uh, step here. And realistically, that is about it. We do not want this path to be this because of this, the assemble debug. Okay, and as we see here, the build is successful in 29 seconds. So what I did was I actually ran the assemble debug Gradle task, right? And realistically what that does inside of our app build outputs apk debug then we just have this generated here with the app debug apk right so realistically this is the path that we need we don't need all of it because it's on my local machine so i'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this little bit of the path and instead of the app build outputs apk release i guess i really didn't need to copy and paste it we're going to go ahead and instead call app dash debug i believe it is yep app debug apk app build outputs apk debug app build outputs apk debug app debug apk Whew, mouthful but that is what we need right because this gradle command created this file at this path right and so this is kind of how the operations and how the uh, actions are starting to come together previous steps build off of you know uh, or, or future steps build off of previous steps work and output and all that kind of stuff. And this is really powerful. The last little bit here is the group testers. This is just a little bit of maintenance that we need to do inside of our uh, Firebase project. So let's go ahead and flip over to app distribution. As we see here, there are no um, you know releases here. And unfortunately, there also are no testers. So we need to add a group here. Let's call it testers this is the name of the group and then inside of testers we're going to go ahead and add a tester so i'm just going to go ahead and add the droid factory email so if you're not familiar with app distribution i highly recommend looking on the channel for some of the other videos that i have on it it's really really powerful it's an amazing way to quickly distribute your build to anybody that you want uh, but more importantly for this exact task we needed to create a group we named that group testers we have testers inside of that group so now when this whole operation runs we now are basically deploying this build uh, to this group here named testers so in order to test this out while wow, it's just a lot of the same word we're gonna have to push this up created our manual deploy action we will commit and push we're gonna push that info up and now when we flip over to our github we can go to actions we will now see the deploy to firebase action which is what we named it and we can then go ahead and run this workflow notice here how the release notes are ah okay sorry i forgot to add the release notes in but notice here how you can actually set them to whatever it is that you want uh realistically the reason i did that is because there is an additional option maybe this documentation will be easier um release notes here and you can pass that along and then that will kind of uh be added to what appears here inside of the releases so sorry to be jumping back and forth here but let me just go ahead and clean that up um where is it? it's just called release notes so we're just going to go ahead and add in this feature here it's basically like a parameter right if you imagine this whole operation here being a function that you're willing to call and all of these things that you're setting being different parameters right so you can really kind of uh, manipulate this function call however you want based upon what you put in here up top here right we had something called inputs and then release notes uh, we can go ahead and update this or, or reference this by saying uh, let's just copy and paste we can simply say here inputs dot release notes and then this is basically going to capture you know put whatever uh, the release notes this this function needs we're going to capture it from the input that was provided we define that input up here and that is whatever the user that when you run the thing is actually putting in here now you notice this says release underscore notes has the star there because it is required true but the release underscore notes does not necessarily look super fancy so we can just simply go ahead and change that up by adding in yet again another little piece of information we can just say the description and we can then just simply say release notes like this right a little bit more human readable version as opposed to the release underscore notes so we're just going to go ahead and uh, push these changes up and we should see this momentarily 
when we bounce back over here, let's refresh the page. We obviously have our deploy to Firebase action. When we run the workflow, yep, we now see release notes here in a more human readable fashion because of how we uh, edited things. And then let's see our first deployment here. Perfect, we can go ahead and fill that out and then we click run workflow and now we wait. Perfect, this is now, uh, th this action is now being queued up. It's now in progress. We can click into it. We can see exactly what's going on. You can see the various steps that it's going to go through. Don't wanna bore you with all the details, so I'll come back around when something fun happens. But at the end of this, we should see the assemble debug you know, build uh, actually being deployed here. All right, our build is successful here. Now we are trying to upload. Uh-oh, did that fail? Hey folks, remember when I was talking about the app ID variable being this? Well, yeah, that says project ID. So I don't know why I was so confident with that. This is what we need, the actual app ID. My apologies. Uh, so for your connected app, you're gonna have to go ahead and get the ID for that. It makes a lot of sense. We're gonna go over here to the actions. We're going to update our Firebase app ID. We're gonna paste that info in there and we're gonna go ahead and hit update secret. And now we're gonna rerun and see how this all goes. All right, release notes are first, really the second deployment here, we'll run the workflow and let me get back to you when something happens. And ladies and gentlemen, check that out here. We have everything working properly. We see everything ran perfectly. Let's bounce on over here, go to our app distribution and would we look at that we have the release notes, as you can see here, our first, really our second deployment. Go ahead and actually see the testers. You can even download the APK if you wanted to. And realistically, if you have, you know, friends, family, other people, you know, testing this QA, whatever the case is, they now have access to this release. So it really is that easy, right? We've kind of set everything up here. You can come over to your actions, select the deploy to Firebase and run this workflow. If you had different branches you wanted to select, you could select different branches. You could put in different release notes that you want, whatever it is you need to do, you can go ahead and actually just now at any point, automatically deploy to Firebase. If you made it this far in the video, really appreciate you. Smash that like button, subscribe if you are brand new. Let me know how I'm doing in the comments below. There's a couple other fun things we can do here to automate deployments to Firebase. We can get them running on a daily cadence. We could get them running on, you know, tag pushes. We could, you know, even if you want to, whenever whenever something gets merged into to main, you can do it. Sure, you, you can do whatever you want. Um, so maybe I'll make some content on that. Let me know if you have anything else you're interested in. Otherwise, catch you in the next one. Thanks.